When we talk about AI in healthcare, I think we need to understand it as a foundational change in the toolkit we have. In the same way, and I mean this profoundly, that algebra changed our understanding of the world. And you could see a robot or two during your next visit to the hospital or the doctor's office. One company has deployed what it is thought to be the world's first fully robotic medical assistant. Fox's Evan Brown has the details. Imagine this. You roll up to the hospital with an emergency and you're greeted not by a nurse, but a AI-assisted robot. Artificial intelligence has in some form been around for decades, but most people are just finding out about it because of things like ChatGPT, which have come into the mainstream. In healthcare, artificial intelligence has been around for years as well. It's helped doctors transcribe notes faster. It's helped with patient experiences with chatbots. But with generative AI, it's really supercharging what healthcare professionals and scientists are able to do by helping predict future health risks, make diagnoses faster and more accurately, and also helping with potential drug discovery for new novel treatments and therapeutics. They're the ones taking your vitals, assessing your tests, giving you a diagnosis, no humans involved. Are we gonna be okay with this? Let's dive into this. I'm Crystal Wijaya and you're watching Kalas Bakar. So we've seen a lot of AI first companies come to the fore right, um, in the last few years, but what exactly is an AI first company? There are companies that use data to make decisions or you know, consider a legal law. That's a point of data that you might use to develop an application that allows you to take a visa uh, or a law is an example of a data point where you use it as an input to your service. Maybe your service is a visa application. And as most Indonesians know, visa applications here are no joke. There are a lot of laws and data points to consider before you can fly anywhere. AI system would take dynamic rules, dynamic data sets and inputs to predict and generate new information or new outcomes. Typically, an AI company is responsible for either inferring information, so this could be things like a note-taking app, speech-to-text, or looking at a picture and making a decision on whether or not this is a cat or a dog. Um, but two, they could also be reasoning models. So this might be something wherein you give them a bunch of text and you ask them, was this user happy with our service? It could be sentiment analysis. Um, that they have to reason on. And then the third thing that AI can do is it can act. It can generate new information or commands. There's a generative AI that can sense whether or not you are placing a bowl on the table and it can pick that up and go wash that dish. And these types of functional behaviors can be very helpful. If you're in a home where you know, you're not perfectly abled, AI can help assist you with your chores or everyday experiences. One place that I think AI needs to be really careful though is in places like healthcare. It can be hard to be an AI first company, especially in the lens of healthcare, because a lot of the data that is relevant to a human body isn't necessarily on paper. We still have to run a number of blood tests. We have to choose which blood tests to run. A lot of that data is dependent on the human patient uh, disclosing that information to a doctor and then the doctor taking that seriously. And so in certain cases where there is human bias and interpretation of that data, maybe helps level the field. But in the case where an AI robot is trained on a very specific subset of data, it really will be biased towards the data that it is given rather than the data that it can infer by visually understanding a human being next to them like a human doctor would. So this might be a place where you know your family doctor is a family doctor for a reason. They're usually someone that you trust and you've been seeing for many years, that understands your medical history. And I'm compelled to trust that type of doctor because they understand the evolution of where I've been, what illnesses I've had, my athletics. Whereas we don't really have AI that follows us around every day, nor do we really want that, maybe. 
I prefer a world where we are able to make use of both. When you have a doctor who is able to take the tools of AI in order to help confirm or disconfirm a diagnosis or to find and search for new possibilities, those are great use cases for AI in this field. Another field where we maybe want AI assistance rather than AI replacements are probably in the world of journalism. I follow several journalists who are editorials. Malaka is one. Uh, Vox, Ezra Klein is another. I'm following these people because I inherently agree with and like to be challenged by their points of view. AI doesn't always have a contrarian point of view and it most definitely doesn't have a point of view that is biased towards the current world circumstances and by the people that they have been interacting with in the real world. AI only shares what it knows based on written imputed data that it is given and frankly most of my world experience is not with a computer and so I don't know that I would want a journalist who bases their information off of something like Twitter. Trust is inherently human to human. If you think about it, AI is one of the first uses of computing wherein we've had to be skeptical about its outputs and its answers. Historically, when we use a computer, we can trust that one plus one equals two, and we don't need to be concerned with whether or not it had good judgment. Computers typically were always correct, given these set of inputs. AI, on the other hand, we actually have to ask and infer whether or not this reasoning is biased or whether or not it's pulling the right information. Hallucination is something that we have to consider with AI. And so I'm always cautious about allowing a journalist to hallucinate a experience that never happened. Humans can do it too. That's not really the issue, but at least with a human, there's someone to hold accountable. In AI, there's a company behind it, and it's a very large company that may not be as interested in the truth as it is in engagement. For most businesses, we may look to AI as this silver bullet or this beacon of hope that can make our business great or increase revenue. But in my experience, not all companies need AI. Most companies don't even make use of the current data that they have. For your business or your field of work, I would think about where does AI make the most sense? Where does it really provide consumer value if I'm in an AI first company? Is it something that can be solved with the tools that already exist or am I force fitting AI to fit so that I can use the new buzzword?